Welcome back to Tabletop Salt. I'm Ross, and today I'm going to continue my analysis of the Chaos Space Marine Codex. Today I'm going to look at the Exalted Champion. As far as I'm aware, a pretty new unit to the Codex and has some abilities that are, let's say, a wee bit handy. Uh, you know, generally an extra HQ that does give a bit more variety. You might find some points here that match the Dark Apostles, mainly because they've got order abilities that are similar, but uh, different in very important ways. So how this usually works is that I begin the video by looking at the stats of the unit, some of the weapons you can choose from it, and the war gear starts with, special abilities, and then I go on to solve the loadouts and role of the unit that I would recommend, artifacts of chaos if they can be taken with it, Legion traits that might be useful, Warlord traits if applicable, Psychic abilities that may help them, and Stratagems, ending with a little bit of a conclusion on top. So yeah, with that, let's have a look at the Exalted Champion. Exalted Champion, uh, movement is 6, so standard for a Marine. Weapon skill 2 and Ballistic skill 3. So again, these guys are pretty dependent on combat, uh, not so much shooting which is good that most of their abilities do affect combat. Strength 4, Toughness 4, again standard unless you're in some kind of extra armour. Wounds 4, which again is standard for most characters, so awesome. 4 attacks, uh, more than Dark Apostle, and same as the Chaos Lord, so you do have sort of average HQ sort of number of attacks. Leadership 8, a little bit less than the Dark Apostle and the Chaos Lord, so not as brave. Uh, not so much of an effect here unless you're getting targeted by psychic abilities and whatnot. And a 3 plus save. You're not in Terminator armour, uh, so you're not getting that 2 plus save. And as far as I'm aware, you can't get it either. There is some relics that can allow you, and we'll talk about them later. So yeah, pretty average for a Marine HQ on the whole. The Exalted Champion is single model armed with a chainsword, ball pistol, and frag and crack grenades. Uh, I won't go into all those weapons in detail because they're pretty standard and I'll be talking about them in every video. The module replaces bolt pistol with one item from the pistols, combo weapon or melee weapons. So you've got a nice wee bit of variety to choose from there just in your sort of melee sections and uh, whatnot. So you have a lot of options to choose how you want to arm them out with. And secondly, uh, the module may replace its chainsword with uh, one item from the pistols or melee weapons. Not the combo weapons, but the pistols or melee. So that means you can dual wield uh, melee weapons, which is pretty cool, or you can dual wield pistols, which I don't recommend. Uh, might make an awesome model, but uh, generally this guy wants melee weapons. So what abilities does he have? Death to the False Emperor. I could talk about this a lot uh, in every video, but if you play Chaos you should be pretty familiar with it. To try and summarise it, if you're playing against Imperiums, a 6 is to hit, a 6 plus to hit, results in a chance of getting an extra attack. Pretty awesome against Imperiums, not very good against everything else. Aspire to Glory, you can reroll failed rolls in the fight phase for friendly Legion units that are within 6 inches of the Exalted Champion. This is a pretty important ability, being able to reroll uh, wound rolls, now it's all wound rolls in the fight phase, so I think, uh, I could be wrong here because I don't know space means. I think they've got a lieutenant or something that allows like reroll ones and it does affect maybe shooting in fight, I could be very wrong in that one. Now this is all wound rolls in the fight phase, so that's kind of handy because uh, there's not many ways to improve to wound rolls in most codexes. Uh, we do have a very good one in Veterans of Long War as a stratagem, but uh, this guy allows you to reroll those wounds, so that's very, very important. And finally, uh, for the Dark Gods, you can reroll fail tip rolls for this model if the target is an enemy character. So it makes him sort of a duelist in that way, where basically if you're going off against a character, not only do you reroll hits, which you're hit on 2 plus as is, uh, you get to reroll those wounds as well, which makes him kind of a wee bit dangerous on that side. So yeah, that is the Exalted Champion as they appear in the Codex. Now I'm going to talk about sort of, uh, the various ways in which I would play them. So let's begin with the loadouts and suggested roles of the sort of uh, Exalted Champion. So the first loadout I call is you do the stabbing. Exalted Champion with bolt pistol, chainsword, 
Frank and Crack Grenades. So this is your cheap option for buffing units. The Exalted Champion gets an extra attack in combat from the Chainsword, but really want to just keep him cheap and, uh, cheap and cheerful uh, so that you know other units around him just get the buff and they do the damage. Don't expect him to do so much of the heavy lifting. But then again, at four attacks, maybe you want him to do some damage. You know, it's, you know, he does have a bunch of attacks and he's most likely going to be around the combat area. So the next one I call is I want to do the stabbing too. Exalted Champion with Bolt Pistol, Power Sword, Slash, Power Fist, Frag and Crack Grenade, or Power Sword, basically a power weapon of some type. So as the Exalted Champion does have 4 attacks, it does benefit from his uh, Aspire to Glory rule. Uh, you can see why you may be tempted to equip him to deal with more situations. A Power Sword is really a really nice option to give you that 2 plus to hit, a good AP, and handy when you're fighting single wound models. Also there's I think relics later on I'll talk about that make this a wee bit nicer, a bit more of a, a nicer choice. Another option is a power fist, uh, higher strength, good AP and a chance to do a fair bit of damage, being obviously able to reroll those uh, wounds means you might be a wee bit more consistent. You also, uh, you may get to reroll with power sword but reroll, you know, you may get to reroll your wounds with power sword. But when you're re-rolling 2s and 3 pluses, it just means that you've got more consistent damage and also Power Fist has the chance of doing more damage compared to a Power Sword. However, you can take you can take both replacing your pistol with uh, one, uh, so you could, for instance, replace your pistol with the Power Sword and you can replace the Chainsaw, uh, Chainsword with the other. So you could essentially have a Power Sword and uh, a Power Fist as far as I'm aware, correct me if I'm wrong on that one. Giving you your options against vehicles and against troops, maybe, you know, that might be a good option. was thinking about putting lightning claws in there, but then I was like, you already reroll wounds anyway, why why would you take lightning claws? There may be situations, but a power sword in one hand and a power fist in the other does sound kind of tempting, if maybe a bit expensive. So if it's a bit too expensive, maybe stick to one, depending on what you want the Exalted Champion to do. If I'm wrong in that loadout, let me know, but you know, just having my two different weapons tearing stuff apart, sounds pretty fun. Artifacts of Chaos slash Relics. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is the Murder Sword. This is how you kind of make him a duelist. So yeah, the Murder Sword, models with power weapons only. The Murder Sword replaces the Bear's Power Sword and has the following profile. Melee range, type melee. Plus 1 strength, minus 4 AP, and 1 damage. Now, the special ability. At the start of the first battle round, but before the first turn has begun, you must nominate one character to be the target of the bearer of the murder sword. This can be a character that is not yet set up on the battlefield. Remember to tell your opponent which character you have nominated. Each attack made with the murder sword that hits, select a character, automatically inflicts a mortal wound upon that character instead of normal damage. So yeah, as I said, this is how you make him a bit of a duelist. Uh, you can re-roll hits when you are using, when you're going against a character. So, you know, when you target that character, you're reliably to put out four mortal wounds. Because as far as I know, uh, yep, you just need to hit the target to cause the mortal wounds. You don't even need to wound, which you get to re-roll anyway. But you hit them, that's mortal wounds. Twos to hit, re-rolling ones can result in four instant uh, mortal wounds. You know, adding to extra strength and a bit more AP is also really, really nice to deal out with uh, uh, infantry, mo you know, one wound infantry models as well, or one wound models in general. So yeah, a pretty good option here. However, if your opponent is wielding something that may do multi-damage, be warned. You know, where you may cause a few wounds, a thunder hammer does have the potential to just sort of nail you. If they've got a terminator guy, you know, or something with five wounds, then you're not going to kill them and the retaliation may be quite great. You also have no win ball saves, so if they are wielding a heavy weapon that is going to cause more damage, this guy will probably get crumped to, you know, pretty easily. However, one thing I would say with the murder sword is that because you've got to tell your opponent, you can sort of make a big song and dance about this, like, right, I'm choosing that guy. You know, I want to target him or her, that character, and uh, you know, if you're near me, I just need to hit you with two up rerolls, and I start throwing mortal wounds your way. 
big up to your opponent in this ability, it might cause them to think, oh, I really don't want to put that character near him, and just play a bit more psychological effect on them, it might be quite handy. So yeah, if you're fighting things that you know, ah oh, well, someone got four wounds, I'll absolutely kill them in one swing, anything heavier that's quite good in combat might win that one overall. Next up I've got Blade of the Hydra, Alpha Legion only. So Blade of the Hydra, Alpha Legion model with a chain sword only, so you don't need to buy a power sword. The Blade of the, the Hydra replaces the bearer's chain sword and it has the following profile. Range melee and tight melee, plus one strength, which is nice, AP minus two and two damage. Each time the bear fights it makes D3 additional attacks with this weapon. So you yeah, have extra strength, decent AP and 2 damage reliably. Not bad at all. And replacing the chainsword keeps it cheap. Getting more attacks is awesome as you're hitting on 2 pluses, re-rolling wounds and this can be really really helpful. Also, we all love Alpha Legion, right? So yeah, this seems like a pretty solid choice as a relic for the Exalted Champion if you do want them to cause a wee bit of damage. Flesh Metal Exoskeleton, Iron Warrior models only. The bearer of the Flesh Metal Exoskeleton has a save characteristic of 2 plus, so that's the only way as far as I can tell you can get your Exalted Champion to 2 plus save, except maybe if you roll in the favour of the Dark Gods, which uh, I think you can, I would have to check. Uh, ba -ba yep, so you can add one same throws of the Exalted, of the Exalted Champion if you do get that on Chaos Boon Table, that's what I was thinking of. But this is the main way you can get a 2 plus save. In addition, this model heals one wound at the start of each of your turns. Exalted Champion does not have access to 2 plus save, so this is kind of helpful and healing wounds will keep him going in the game for longer. As a unit with predominantly a buff ability, personally, you know, it does help. It keeps him in the game and means other units doing better. I personally prefer them, you know, the Exalted Champion to go down a more murder route because I think he can do a bit of damage himself. But you know, even with an extra turn of those rerolls to hit, uh, sorry, rerolls to wounds, it can be very beneficial. Just one more turn can really make a huge difference. So there is that choice as well in terms of if you want to go for survivability. Legion Traits, as the Exalted Champion is a murder buffing machine, in the fight phase you can bet there's some Legion Traits that will help. So, Renegade Chapter, Dark Raiders, this allows you know, with this trait to advance and charge in the same turn. So you guessed it, Renegade is appearing again, do I really need to say the Exalted Champion, you know, he wants to get the guy in combat, he wants to join them in combat, and possibly do some damage, so advancing in really does help and makes it more reliable to get that damage where needed. Will Deter's Butcher's Nails. When a unit with this trait makes a successful charge, you can make one additional attack with each of its models in the subsequent fight phase. Here's the flip side. So an extra attack, very helpful. The more attacks you've got means you can abuse the rerolls to wound more often. Uh, nothing hurts than, you know, if you fail those wounds then, ah damn, lost them. You know, you get more more attacks means more potential damage you can cause to your opponent. So more attacks is always handy. Plus this guy, like the Dark Apostle, really helps when you throw in a bunch of Corn Berserkers. So yeah, World Eater is not a bad choice to have as a Legion trait. Emperor's Children, Flawless Perfection. Units with this trait always fight first in the charge phase, even if they didn't charge. If the enemy has a unit that is charged or has a similar ability, then alternate choosing units to fight with, starting with the player whose turn is taking place. I've talked about this before, uh, you know, FC is, as I said before, I think it's a defensive buff more than anything else because it doesn't help really when you charge, but really it just means that when you get charged by a horde army, you can really start dictating how the fight is going to go rather than them doing all their charges first you can intervene in it and cause a bit of chaos. So yeah, that's handy as well because you get the rerolls to wounds. It just means that, you know, if you do get charged, then yeah, Exalted Champion can help there as well. Not gonna lie, I think I've talked about this with the Dark Apostle quite a lot as well. Another one I would mention is the saw of Alpha Legion 1, because I do speak about Alpha Legion being quite useful, Exalted Champion a few times here. 
and that obviously I won't go into that one in detail but basically you know there is tr you know more stratagems and relics that help him through uh, being an alpha legion not so much the ability from legion but the stratagems which I'll go into and the relics Warlord traits. Although an Exalted Champion may not seem like the reliable sort of Warlord compa compared to, say, a Demon Prince, he can get some use out of abilities. Maybe a special character is bringing a Warlord trait that is not much use to you, or not that reliable, uh, then yeah, an Exalted Champion does have some Warlord traits that can help. So the first one is Flames of Spite. If the wounds roll for a melee attack made by your Warlord is 6+, plus, inflict one mortal wound, on the target in addition to any other damage. This synergizes well with the Exalted Champion's ability to reroll wounds. Put this on a Warlord with Blades of the Hydra and a large amount of attacks that have a good chance to cause damage and mortal wounds on top of it. One of the few times I would say don't go Alpha Legion I am Alpharius because you're awesome we love that ability it's, it's I am Alpharius uh, but this along with the Relic can cause a nice bit of damage. Uh, also, if you do go I am Alpharius, you run the risk of rolling the first time you have to roll to generate your Warlord trait, and I believe two of them are like reroll wound rolls. I think one of them is if you go against uh, Adeptus Astaris, and one is you get to reroll wound rolls of one. Gonna be no advantage to this guy because he already gets it. So I would really not go I am Alpharius as a Warlord trait for him. I think Flames of Spite is pretty handy because it synergizes well with these reroll. To wound. Uh, Unholy Fortitude. Add one to the wound characteristics of your Warlord. In addition, roll a dice each time your Warlord loses a wound. On a 6+, plus, your Warlord shrugs off the damage and does not lose a wound. So again, this is about survival. Keep him going, keep those rerolls going. You know, honestly not bad. If you're not wanting to have him sort of be uh, uh, murdering as much, you want him to survive so other units benefit from him, then yeah, Unholy Fortitude might keep him in for a turn, which is very, very handy. Next one is Exalted Champion. Add one to your Warlord's attack characteristic. Not really inspired, but it's kind of named after, you know, the unit, so I felt it was kind of had to be done. Uh, if you are planning high damage with, say, a Power Fist or something, or, you know, using Blade of the Hydra, then, you know, simply more attacks is a good thing, you know, and you don't need to do any special circumstances to activate it. Um, it just gives you plus one to your attack characteristic. So very handy there as well, where other abilities may have things you've got to achieve for it. Straight off the bat, extra attack. Very, very handy. Uh, would I say there's better ones? Yeah, Flames of Spite is probably my go-to in that one. And finally, uh, Wood Bear is the voice of Logar. Increase the range of aura abilities on your Warlord stage sheet by 3 inches. Having a bigger aura ability helps the Exalted Champion. It just means that more when you're playing other units and you've got more range with your aura abilities. Certainly when I play Admech Call, it's very, very handy. But having a 9 inch bubble around him that allows you to reroll wounds, very, very nice. It just means that you can spread out a wee bit more to cause more hurt, I suppose. So yeah. Not bad, just means that you get a bit more freedom with your spacing. Psychic abilities. Uh, Diabolic Strength, Warp Charge 6. Select a Heretic Stars model within 12 inches of the Psyker. Until the next Psychic phase, add 2 to the model's strength and 1 to the model's attack characteristic. The Exalted Champion uh, is a bit harder to bring to that all-important Strength 8. But more importantly, let's see with the Power Sword. It can bring an AP. Uh, it can bring down uh, the AP extensively. So the AP of Power Sword is great. More strength means generally you will wound better, though you do get to reroll your wounds. You know your two step rerolling. Extra AP is good, so it's kind of handy. You know you don't need to get to that strength eight unless you're maybe targeting a vehicle. Though if you're targeting a vehicle and don't have a power fist, what are you playing at? But it just means you've got easier time to cause more damage and you get an extra attack. Is there more viable units than this in this codex? Yeah, Dean Prince, sure. Uh, that one helps. But still, you know, it's still really handy and you don't need to get to that all important strength eight for this to be truly, truly effective, which I usually say with Diabolic Strength, it should be all about getting to the strength eight. 
Death X, warp charge 8. If manifested, selects a va uh, visible enemy unit within 12 inches of the Psyker. Until the start of the next psychic phase, the, that unit cannot take involve saves. So again, this does not actually affect the Exalted Champion. I think I said the exact same ones for the Dark Apostle, but the Dark Apostle does get strength 8. But more importantly, the unit you are uh, sort of going along with Involves can be a pain, so when you've got you know extra chances to cause more wounds and in essence more damage, you don't want three up, you know thunder shields, you know uh, storm shields, saving them. So yeah, you know negating that sort of uh, uh, involve save is very 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 handy. So I always think if you've got a good hard hitting unit, but you know your opponent's got a lot of involve saves, this is a pretty solid one to have. And to have an Exalted Champion go along with them will just guarantee the Psyker and the Exalted Champion will bring their points back by another unit, causing the damage. Although saying that, the Exalted Champion uh, can maybe duel someone off who's got uh, uh, an involve save. If you have the Murder Sword, not so much because you just cause the mortal wounds. Blade of the Hydra though, can be quite a scary prospect. Stratagem recommendations. So here we go, Alpha Legion, uh, forward operations, Alpha Legion only. Again, as usual, I'm not going to explain this one, it's quite, quite long, but this is basically your sort of infiltration stratagem. Uh, like the Dark Apostle, Exalted Champion does not have access to a jump pack or deep strike in real any way, so this is the way to get your mobility, to maybe spend a command point on a character, to go along with another killer unit. So you've got a unit of Corn Berserkers in your Alpha Legion, or Chosen with Lightning Claws, Put another uh, command point because you can use this one uh, more than once at the beginning of the game to have them all in their infiltration and then charge forward, get that damage and uh, get those rerolls. I think I said there, you know, chosen with lightning claws. You don't want him to go along with a unit of lightning claws because they get their reroll wounds anyway. Power weapons, whatever you fancy. Basically, your killer unit in combat that doesn't usually get to reroll wounds, get this guy to go along with them, or maybe a dark apostle. Uh, just cause that. If you get first turn, you can cause some serious, serious damage. Next up, Fury of Corn. Uh, this one costs three command points to do. Use this strat and uh, use this stratagem at the end of the fight phase. Select a heretic Sars Corn infantry or biker unit. That unit can immediately fight again. An expensive stratagem, which may be better suited to bigger units that have more attacks. However, in the case of a duel with another opponent, this may give you the edge to sort of finish them off with a healthy number of attacks from your Exalted Champion. Word of caution though is that, you know, this is done at the end of the fight phase, so your opponent will get to strike back first uh, before you can then go, ha, three command points, I'm going to bash in the head first. So just be cautious of that, you don't have involve saves, don't bank on it going, right, okay, I'm going to put the Exalted Champion in, I'm going to get two rounds of fighting, so you know, I'm going to kill that model because I've got a chance to cause 8 mortal wounds with the murder sword. Now they might get their thunder hammer first and it's crunky. So be cautious of that one. It's very, very expensive. I would almost always go with another unit that has a lot more attacks than the Exalted Champion. But you never know, he might have the chance to finish off an opponent if given the chance. So yeah, that's my thoughts on the Exalted Champion. It works really well if you plan to maybe have a big sort of devastating charge unit. Go along with the Dark Apostle and you are re-rolling hits and re-rolling wounds, which can be very, very, very scary for a first turn alpha strike. Uh, no doubt if your opponent sees you field all that and you're coming towards them, they'll probably try and eliminate it as soon as possible. But it can be a lot, a lot of fun. I think I spoke a lot there about how Alpha Legion have some things to benefit them. I'm intrigued to hear what you guys think. Uh, do you think the, the Exalted Champion is better than Dark Apostle? Uh, with the ways to get a lot of rerolls to ones to hit from the Dark Demon Prince or Chaos Lord or other characters, the Exalted Champion does offer the variety of rerolling wounds in the fight phase. So there is, a, there is an area for him. But please let me know and other viewers how you think the Exalted Champion fits. So thanks again for watching, uh, please comment, share, like and subscribe. 
check us out on social media where we pun uh, put up a bunch of projects we're working on and also commentary of what uh, sort of stuff that's going on with the hobby and check us out on Patreon because you might be able to give us a hand there which is always appreciated keeps us giving you more content and we give you some rewards as well for helping us which is handy so yeah thanks again and we'll see you on our Tabletop Salt Battle Report <laughs>